I'd like to welcome our guests to the house of the Lord this morning on this beautiful Easter Sunday that's outside. We have wonderful weather, but we're here inside celebrating the life and death and resurrection of our Savior this morning. So as we go into this first song, as we sing about He is risen, let's remember what we're singing about. Let's remember the sacrifice that was paid. Let's remember all He went through, but that He not only died for us, but that He rose again so that we can be here this morning, that we can worship His name, that we can love Him as He loves us. Let's worship as we start this morning. I thank you, Jesus, for your worship, God. I thank you for the cross, Lord, and I thank you for your resurrection this morning, Jesus. Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you're going to have your way this morning, Jesus. Lord, that you're going to pour out your spirit, Lord, that because you are alive, Lord, we can be here this morning to experience your spirit, Jesus. He's risen, forever glorified. Risen, He's risen, King Jesus, King Jesus is alive. Same power. 
why we're here right now because Jesus rose in glory with all power and authority and he went and he conquered my enemies he put them under my feet sing he rose in glory with all power wondering how this next song we're going to sing is outlining what he did it's an older one Um, for those of you wondering what we're here celebrating if you don't know is God himself going to just stop there and absorb that. God himself decided I can't leave them hopeless anymore. Let 
that sink in for a second. The maker of everything in our universe looked at you, Trevor Milton, and said, no more. Across this eons of time and went that one. And so he went and he died for us and paid the penalty that was ours. Every broken, weary 
Why don't we just continue to exalt that name above every name? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, church. Oh, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Now I want to do something weird, but I want to turn that praise into worship. And I'll tell you why. Because the Lord wants to do something intricate today in this service. He wants to do something intricate in your lives. He wants to, he literally wants to change your heart, change your mind, change your emotions forever. And so this has been an amazing time of worship in worship service. And so let us begin to, so, so praise is different from worship. Praise is saying how great God is and what he's done. Worship is I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're so wonderful. Could we do that? We just raise a hand up to heaven. Lord, I desire you. I love you and I desire you. Oh, Jesus, draw me close to you today. That's it. He is as close as the mention of his name. Begin to open your mouth and begin to talk to him. Jesus, I love you. I desire you. I need you. You are the lover of my soul because the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. There is liberty, which means God can do anything He desires to do. Hallelujah. But as you worship, He is now able to do it in your life. When you worship, He is now able to change you forever. Hallelujah. Just for one more moment, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, ya raba ye kaba ye pata. Himba rosso tarete to. Jesus, you're wonderful. And you see the flow that begins to happen right there. Hallelujah. It takes a life of its own, doesn't it? Hallelujah. There's an intimacy here. Oh my God's drawing us closer to him today. I love you. Just one more time, before you see it, one more time. Is there something that your heart is crying right now for him? Now we've come to a place where you feel that wonderful presence of God. You feel close to him. Is there something in your heart that you just, God, I've just always wanted to tell you this. I've always wanted to just speak to you. Hallelujah. He's listening, church. He's listening. What's your heart's cry today for God to hear? Just for another moment, let us begin to worship and begin to tell God, I love you. I love you. Oh, thank God for the mercy tree. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. I was messed up. I was going nowhere. And you saved me and you healed me and you delivered me and you set me free and you set my feet upon a rock. Oh, Jesus, you're wonderful. Oh, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. I will always sing the praises of a mighty God. Hallelujah. Woo! What you're feeling in this place, <laughs> is a wonderful presence of the Spirit of the Lord. I triple dog dare you to open your mouth and just begin to say his name. I triple dog dare you. Hallelujah. Because he is as close as the mention of, and he, he, not only is he dying, he, he died so that he could minister to you. What an honor. He died and rose again so he could have relationship with you. 
One more time, just raise a hand and say that name, Jesus, Savior, lover of my soul, Jesus. Jesus. Woo. God bless you. You may be seated. There is such an arresting presence of the Lord in this place, and I thank God for it. I was brought to tears more than once over that worship service today. Brother Armstrong, I just love that song. Where is he? My soul. It's good to have all of my family here today. Amen. I do need to have a quick corporate board meeting after church with, if I could, Brother Trevor Milton as well. Hallelujah. It's going to be a strange title, but I'm telling you, you are going to know very quickly where I'm going. But I want to talk to you today about the man in the iron mask. And when I tell you, when I tell you that the reason why we feel this, this, is, this atmosphere we're feeling right now is not praise and it's not victory. It's intimacy. It's worship. That's where the Lord Jesus, you hear me, that's where the Lord Jesus will do his deepest work. It's, it's soft, it's loving. God is a gentleman. I'm in the Holy Ghost. God is a gentleman. He's not going to push you to do something. But he loves you. And he died for you. And the reason why we feel this glorious presence is because after 2,000 years, he still reaches. After 2,000 years, he's still reaching. He's still loving. He's still drawing. He's still blessing us with an amazing presence. We, we never deserved it, but we got it anyway. Oh, thank God for Calvary. Thank God for the mercy tree. Many of you know the story of this man in the iron mask in the 17th century. It is a true story. In the 17th century, there was a man who was literally clasped in an iron mask by the French king, Louis XIV. And he had two musketeers with him at all times. My boys are going to grow up to be musketeers, apparently. but they had two musketeers with him at all times. And we don't know who he was. I researched a little bit. We don't know if it was Louis XIV's secret twin brother. We don't know if it was somebody in his army that really messed up. We, we, we don't know if they had some sort of important information against the king. We have no idea, but we do know the punishment. And the punishment was this. You can talk about your immediate needs. You can keep it surface. But as soon as you say anything else, if you tell them who you are, if you tell them what you're like, if you tell them anything about your past, the two guards would immediately kill him. Those were the orders. For 34 long years, that man stayed behind the mask. Imagine, 34 years, the man behind the mask. And he was transferred to a few prisons, and there was some hubbub when he was there, but he was resigned that this is my fate. I will never be able to have a meaningful relationship with anyone else as long as I live. I will always be the man behind the mask. What a terrible fate to live in the natural. 
And yet I give this to you today to tell you there are people amongst us today living behind a mask. By choice or by deception from the enemy because you've been so hurt. You've been through just too much. Everything now is just surface. You ever meet anybody like that? You go, oh my soul. They got too much stuff going on. I don't even know where to start. They present as, hey, yeah, how are you doing? Good, yeah, oh, I'm great. Yeah, hey, tip top, yeah, everything's great. And you walk away going, what? Everything's a mask. Everything's surface. There's no depth anymore because they, they have been convinced. See, that man had no choice. He had to wear the mask. But we have a choice. I was going to title this the son of man versus the man with the iron mask. But I just said man with the iron mask. You really don't open up and share who you are. There's no depth in your relationships. There's no trust. There's no peace. There's no accountability. No submission. Figuratively, you wear the mask of your own making. Resigned, perhaps. Unable to ever believe that you could break free. And I do not come here today to condemn you or judge you. I do not come here today to do that. But I'm telling you that God wants to do a deep, sovereign work in your heart and in your emotions so you no longer have to wear the mask. I'm such a biblical novice. I'm sure that helps you. I did not realize that Jesus Christ of Nazareth mostly referred himself or referred himself as the son of man. And I really got looking at that. He referred to himself as the son of man 87 times in the New Testament. The son of man must die and rise again. The son of man has the power to forgive sins. The son of man is also Lord of the Sabbath. And, and we just read these, these scriptures and go, okay, he's the son of man. But we don't really understand the gravity, the authority, what he was beginning to declare into the atmosphere. And when you dive deep into it, you go back to Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. Alex, if you could put it up there. Jesus is reaching back hundreds of years before he ever lived reaching back to the vision that the prophet Daniel had in a foreign land. And Daniel said, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him this Son of Man, dominion, glory, a kingdom, a people, and nations, and languages that would serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. It's never going to pass away, and his kingdom shall never be destroyed. Now let me just marry these two concepts. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Keep it up there. Find yourself a new job. <laughs> I just tease it. Can't fire people on Easter. <laughs> All this dominion and glory and kingdom and people and a, and a kingdom without end. Guess what you did this morning? When you walked through these doors, you just walked into his house. 
the Son of Man with a dominion and authority without end. All power and authority is given unto him in heaven and in earth. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last that was, was and is and is to come. Oh, there's none like Jesus. There's none like Jesus. All that authority and all that dominion died on a cross so you wouldn't have to wear a mask anymore. So you wouldn't have to walk around with all the hurts that you've been carrying around all these years. So my wife and I had a conversation the other week. I, I would love to get up here and tell you people that I am just perfect. You wouldn't believe me anyway. But my wife and I were talking about something there the other day and, and, and something happened and it really affected me and, and she said, that was kind of odd for you to be affected in such a way. And I said, well, you know, we started to go back to, you know, when I was a kid and this is just how people treated me when I was a kid. So this is how I acted because that's how they treated me and I just figured, okay, well, I guess I'll be like that. And so you grow up to be an adult and you can pay your bills and you can have a marriage and you can, but you're, you're still operating under that perspective, under that mask, under that understanding. But I'm telling you, there's a great God of glory in this house that says, I went to Calvary so that you could be free from the guilt and the shame and the condemnation and all of the things that have always tried to come against you. I'm telling you, I can tell when somebody's putting the mask on. I can tell when the mask comes off and I can tell when the mask goes on. But I don't judge and I don't condemn. I just try to love them because Jesus loves you so much. He just wants you to get rid of that mask forever and say, I'm free in him. He's come to set me free. I don't need to live like this anymore. I'm no longer the man in the iron mask. Matthew 8 and 20 says this, and Jesus said unto him, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. Matthew 9 and 6, but that ye may know that the son of man hath power on earth to forgive sin. What a king. What an authority. What a powerful king that can forgive sins, that can raise the dead, that can heal the sick, that can cast out devils. And that could fill me with his presence and spirit. Matthew 12 and 8. For the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Oh, the son of man who forgives sins. Lord of the Sabbath. Heals the sick in Luke 5 and 24. Suffers many things to die and rise again in Luke 9 and 22. Stands at the right hand of God in Acts 7.56 or the place of authority. Came to serve and give his life for a ransom to many 20 and 28. Why does Jesus constantly refer to himself 87 times as the son of man? Because what he's telling you and what I'm telling you is he has all authority to break whatever has happened in your life. He has all dominion and all authority and the preeminence over anything in your life and anything that has ever happened to you. He is not limited in any facet. If he created the world, certainly he could heal your heart. If he created the world, certainly he could heal your offense. You see, he says he's the son of man so many times because he's constantly telling his disciples and even us 2,000 years later, he has the power and authority to heal, to set free, to save, to restore, and to forgive your sins. 
Sometimes we come into the house of God and we say it's just going to be another Sunday. You limit the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You see, I present to you today not just a man that died on a cross, but I present to you the Son of Man with the greatest kingdom that was loosed in the book of Acts. And it is without end. Isaiah 9 and 6 says this, For unto us a child is given, unto us a son is born, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. But the next verse says this, His government will be without end. Or the increase, pardon me, the increase of his power and dominion and authority is without end. You can't limit the power of God. Woo! Why are you so excitable today? Because I'm trying to impart to you that you cannot leave here the same way. Matthew 18 and 1. How do I access this? How do I access this joy and this peace? How do I access this kingdom? At the same time came the disciples to Jesus and they were arguing. Who was the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child unto him and said him in the midst of them, and he said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? It means kids don't have, now please, don't take all your filters off, okay? But a lot of kids don't have filters. We were sitting at dinner last night, Easter dinner, some people thought perhaps something was a little too salty. And there's my son Gentry going. <laughs> I didn't hear it, but Mammy heard it. Gentry just sits there and goes, man, what's the hate on with all the salt? <laughs> I'm like, oh, because my boy loves the salt. What's the hate on with all the salt? But what we do when we come to the church house, guess what we do? Hi, bro. How you doing? Sister, good to see you. Hey. How you doing? Call me. Right? But it's a game face. It's the preacher face. It's the platform face. It's the, I just had a fight with my spouse, but I have to pretend everything's okay face. That happens across the street. doesn't happen here. And so what you do is you actually, over time, create a mask. You just become accustomed to, hey, how you doing? I got this. But inside, you don't have anything. You're still the hurt little kid. You're still struggling with offense that happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago. He wore the mask for 34 years. But why does Jesus say you have to become like little children? Because adults aren't transparent. Kids are just like, I need you, Daddy. That's what kids are like. I need you, Dad. Right? When your little boy, little girl scrapes their knee, they don't think, they don't walk around going, no, no, I'm good. I don't need Dad right now. Oh, no, no, no. The world is over. I need Daddy. I need daddy to come kiss my boo-boo and then everything's going to be fine. But what do adults do? I'm good. I got this. We don't have most stuff. We just pretend we do. And unless you become like little children, unless you begin to become transparent in the presence of God,
Verse 10, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Wait a minute. This great king with all dominion and authority and power. He cares about my broken, messed up life. He cares about the hurt that happened to me. He cares about all the baggage I've been carrying around for way too long. Yes, that is Jesus. What? It is the great, he's the greatest king that has ever lived. A king that comes to serve. A king that comes to die on a cross. A king that comes to save you when you're not even worth saving. And what do we do? We pretend we're okay and we don't desperately need him. You need to stop pretending like it's okay in your life. And you need to come when we do pray. You need to come to this altar like a little child. Say, God, I'm just... And I'm sure none of you have done this, but have you ever avoided the altar because you didn't want anybody to think that you needed prayer? Right? Have you ever come up, come, come up here and desperately needed prayer for something, but just kind of wandered around and tried to pray for others because you didn't want anybody to know that you needed prayer? You're acting like an adult, not a child. Stop quick acting like adults. Because Jesus says you need to come to the kingdom of God as a child. Taking all the filters away and taking all the masks away and taking all that junk away that you hide. And at an altar, God can touch you. And at an altar, God can change you. Next verse. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. Watch, then you pray, then you're healed. There's got to be openness. There's got to be accessibility. And there's got to be transparency. Next verse. And I'm almost coming to a close. The book of Isaiah says, He is despised and rejected of men, man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. We despised him, we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Talking about Jesus, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for all the bad stuff we've done. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, or the stripes that they beat him with, that whipped him with, with his stripes, we are healed. He could have just gone to the cross and saved us. But he said, I'll take the whipping so that they can have healing. And I'm going to end today in Luke 4 and 18. And I want us to stand. I want you to think about the mask in your life. I want you to think about the mask and what's hiding behind it and what you just won't show anyone. And I want you to take that and I want you to put it on this altar. Say, God, I'm going to come to you as a little child. I'm no longer going to hide. I'm no longer going to pretend that everything is okay when I'm truly broken inside. I just don't want anybody else to know. Jesus preaches his first message. Boy, he would have messed up that service. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is, he just reads scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. Recovering of sight to the blind. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. Four out of the five of those could be emotional or spiritual healing. We love it when people get out of the wheelchairs. But I'm telling you, I'm looking at broken people in this church. And you get your fancy clothes on every week. Right? And you want to be just, don't know, oh, everything's good. Don't look at me. Everything's fine. I got my suit on or I got my best dress on or I got, everybody thinks I'm fine. But he knows you're not. He knows you're not. Man in the iron mask, I introduce to you the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the greatest king, the greatest authority, the greatest dominion, a kingdom without end. And he has come to set you free. He has come to heal. He has come to deliver. He has come to heal those deep places in your heart and your emotions that no one gets to. And what we're going to do right now is we're all as a family going to come up to the front. And I am going to pray over you. And I want you to become as a little child as you begin to pray. Come on up real quick. There is the presence of the Lord has stayed with us the entire service. There's an amazing presence of the Lord in this house. We don't want no Pentecostal Judge Judy's at the altar today. Or Jim the Judge. Uh, not you, Jim, wherever you are. Why did God, God die on Calvary? So we could come Sunday after Sunday pretending we weren't broken? Pretending we were just fine? No, that's just religion. That's just social religion and social construct. That is not the church he died for. The church he died for is a church of healing. As Bishop always says, it's a, it's a spiritual hospital. Hallelujah. So I want you to be open with the Lord today. What are you hiding behind the mask? What are you hiding behind your mask? Close your eyes and I want you to raise your hands right up to heaven. And I, right now I want you to give that to him. Lord Jesus, it's Easter and I'm going to give this to you right now. I want you to release it to him right now. I give my pride, I give my hurt, I give my abuse, I give my lack of trust. I give it to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I am going to pray for you. And God is going to release you. Uh, and there's going to be a great healing. There it is right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing. I speak healing. Raise your hands right up to heaven. I speak healing. In the name of of Jesus I loose you from the bonds I'm not hiding anymore behind my mask ministry if you could find someone to pray for in the name of Jesus Christ Lay hands on somebody right now. Give it to him fully. I'm not wearing my abuse anymore. I'm not wearing my offense anymore. I'm not wearing those things that have happened to me. I'm not going to pretend that I'm okay. I'm going to be like a child and cry, Abba, Father.
I said, give it to him. He is the healer. He is the healer. He is the resurrection and the life. you're done praying find somebody to pray with God is doing deep work in lives today he is restoring hearts